compression in the middle of an urban area formed by the absence of buildings. So a big surface parking lot in the middle of a downtown area we call a parking crater. We have done a couple competitions at Streets Blog to sort of shame cities. It was inspired by a picture of Denver from the 1970s that's just, it was a mind-boggling picture, just the extent of the parking. So we thought we'll invite people to submit their own craters from their cities and then um, we got so many responses that it was too much to put in a single post. So we divided it up into a Sweet 16 style tournament and put each city in a head-to-head -head matchup. But what you're seeing is the state-owned land that is used for parking. One of the reasons that there is so much parking is that the state provides free parking for all its employees. And in fact, I am told that it's part of the union contract that if you are working downtown, that you're guaranteed free parking within a certain number of feet from your desk. Wow. So all of this, this huge bit of the city is devoted to parking. And one of the things it does is separate very nice residential district to the south from um, the, the downtown. So very few people walk. This is like a moat surrounding the downtown. Hartford has some of the most interesting domestic architecture, but so much of it is gone, especially the best ones. It's really, if you live here, it's very sad. It was like a mini Boston, the brownstones. You know, you look, look at this, it's amazing. So this is what it used to look like? Yep. And I submitted the one this year because it was they were all along Highway 345, which is the one we're talking about trying to, to remove because we, if you basically subsidize everybody living far outside the city and commuting in to work, and the highest and best use for the land around it is going to be parking. So people live outside, drive in, and then they leave at night. But the problem when you do that is once everything is parking, then downtown is no longer desirable either. And then the people leave, the jobs follow, and then nothing is left. The other one that, we, that was submitted last year was over by the Ross Perot Children's Museum. And it's a similar situation where it's just leftover land around a bunch of uh, interchanges and exit ramps and clover leaves. And so it's like development just doesn't work there. So you end up with uh, nothing but surface parking all around it. We're standing in the middle of Cleveland's parking crater. We've got parking behind us, parking over here, parking over there, and on this fourth corner, we actually have a parking garage. There's an old picture of this area, and this was all tightly packed buildings of about the same size you see over there. This is um, Cleveland's warehouse district, and it's a pretty thriving neighborhood. Um, several thousand people live here. They charge really high rents. There's a lot of nice restaurants. It's sort of one of the gems of downtown. Um, and right across from it, we have the parking crater, unfortunately. And the sad thing is, all the blocks in the parking crater were full of buildings like that. It was really um, dense development of pretty old buildings. So here we are in downtown Houston. Uh, we're very close to Houston's light rail system, close to B-Cycle and, and lots of walking and biking and things around here. The Houston downtown has, I think, over 150,000 jobs here. And then here's an empty crater uh, of parking, uh, which is not a very good use at all of this space. In Houston, you have a lot of factors. Um, there actually is a history of the EPA stopped granting sewer permits uh, a long time ago for a while because our water quality is so bad. And so for a while, to build a new building, you had to tear an old one down to get their sewer permit. So a lot of the spots in downtown Houston and midtown Houston uh, actually were torn down because of that. So you can't find very many funny old buildings in downtown Houston. Uh, and instead, they've been sitting here for 20, 30 years as parking lots. Supposedly, there's 30 parking spaces per person here in Houston. So uh, we are heavily investing in parking. Um, everywhere but downtown Houston, um, you are required to provide lots of parking. Having so much parking changes the nature of how the city feels, but more importantly how it functions, especially from a transportation point of view. Basically what we have done is create what is essentially uh, an office park. 
So all these people drive into the city and then drive out because nobody really wants to be around all of that parking lot. It's a problem, but it's also an opportunity because the land is there. <laughs> so basically we have land banked um, the, these areas, but you need to have the right policies, you need to have the right mindset if you're going to change how these cities have evolved.